I don't particularly like Google as a company, you know, with all that user spying and all that, but what I can say is they make quite a convenient search engine. One of the things that makes it so convenient is providing search results for certain topics before you actually open up any of the web pages. Now, for some things, you can argue whether those answers they provide are actually accurate, but for things like, say, some famous person's birthday, the lyrics of a song, the cast of a movie, those things you can typically trust as being quite accurate. And something I like even less is the ever-growing in popularity digital assistants like Alexa and Siri with their always-on microphones that for a lot of people basically just exist to answer very, very simple questions. Yes, you can do other things like control your music, but all of that stuff can be done through plenty of other means. You don't just need a digital assistant to do that. So what if we were to take the good part of Google and combine it with the simple question answering, make it just a little bit more private by eliminating your web browser? So that's that's what we're looking at today. This is a program called Tuxie, which describes itself as a CLI digital assistant, but in reality what it actually is, is a CLI tool for searching Google with a bias for a specific type of search result. Now due to the way Google handles queries, typically this will return better results if you structure what you're searching for as a question. So let's say I wanted to know the age of Linus Torvalds for example, so let's go and run Tuxie and pass in how old is Linus 12 volts. Now, you could go and quote it. You don't actually need to do that. It'll handle as many arguments as you pass into it. So let's go and run this. And as we're going to see, we get the age of 51 years. Now, I'm not 100% sure if that's correct. I presume that it is, though. So let's say I slightly spell his name wrong. Let's, so let's say instead of Linus 12 volts, I make the very common spelling mistake of Linux 12 volts. So what's it going to do? As we can see here, it still returns the same result we had before, but this time it says, did you actually mean Linus? So this is basically parsing that thing in Google where it says, hey, did you actually mean this result instead of this result? It shows you what actually has been changed here. Now, finding people's ages is all well and good, but let's say I wanted to find out a bit more about someone. Let's say I wanted to find out who Richard Stallman was, for example. So let's do Tuxi, who is Richard Stallman? Now, in some cases, you don't necessarily have to put in the who is there. You can just search for the name. So let's try this time go for Tuxie Richard Stallman. Now, in some instances, you may actually get a different result. In this case, we actually do. The reason why that happens is when you search for these two different queries in Google, on the right-hand side of the screen where it says the actual search result before you go into the page, you get slightly different answers because I guess the top result they find is a slightly different result. But I could also check things like, say, the lyrics of a song. So let's say I want to find out the lyrics for Deadbeats, by Mori Calliope and put lyrics on the end just to make sure the result actually shows up properly and as we can see basically those are the lyrics right there or let's say I want to find out the cast of Iron Man for example and that will then drop the list right here. Now not every query is going to return a really nice result. Sometimes even though it still returns search results on Google, Tuxie won't be able to actually show anything to you. So one example I found is if you search for no result, it will actually tell you there was no results to be found. Even though if you go and search for that on Google, as we can see there is still tons and tons of things that could actually go and show me. Personally, I would have preferred if it turned into something like Googler at this stage, or at least have an option to do that, where if there is no search result, it would just show you the links that get returned on that page. When it comes to links, the same is kind of true for the other ones as well. So searching for something like, say, the cast of a movie. I would like to have a link here where it says where this actually came from, because maybe this isn't actually all the information on the page. This is just the shortened down version of the information that Google wants to show me. I have touched on it a bit, but the way this basically works is when you search for something like, say, Richard Stallman, off to the right-hand side here, it shows an excerpt from the Wikipedia article, and this is the exact same information that we saw returned by Tuxi. Basically, what happens is Tuxi uses an HTML parsing library to pull out this information and then show that to the user. And that's why for search results that don't actually have this right-hand side, or in the case of, say, Deadbeats... Uh, Deadbeats lyrics, for example, that don't have this section right here, it doesn't actually have anything to show you. Now, just taking the shorthand search results, I think would be reason enough to at least try this out a bit to see if you can fit it into some sort of workflow, but it actually does a bit more as well. 
what it does is actually interact with some of the services built into the Google search engine, one of those being the Google Calculator. Now, should you be using a calculator built into Google rather than one you just have installed on your system? Probably not, but if you want to, it's, it's definitely there. So let's say I wanted to search for something like uh, 2 to the power of 8, which should return 256. Now, in some instances, the query might break a bit. I know that if you put really long formulas into Google, it doesn't really know what it's supposed to do with them. It doesn't realize it's supposed to go into the calculator. So for things like that, it might be a bit of a problem. But for basic things like this, it works perfectly fine. And it also interacts with Google Translate. Now, I know Google Translate is a bit of a meme, and people who actually want to try to translate stuff automatically typically use things like DeepL now, but Google Translate works well enough. It works well enough on very short sentences or individual words. So if you wanted to go and translate something like I love you into Japanese, you'll get this result right here, which is pretty much okay. Basically, anything you want to translate, just put in language after it, and it should activate it through Google Translate. So, for example, let's say I wanted to know what uh, tree in Spanish was. I have no idea if the result's going to be correct, and that's the result. If someone happens to know Spanish in the comment section and knows if that's actually a decent translation, let me know. Now, it also doesn't have to be from English into another language. You could start from something else instead. So let's say I wanted to start from Japanese, for example, and I want to search for something like Taidoku, and I want to put that into... Let's put it back into English, for example. And we should get back physical strength, and there we go. Now we can have a bit of fun with this. So by default, Tuxi returns pretty output. Basically it has a little bit of extra formatting to make it stand out a bit, but we can go and remove that by passing in the dash R option. And this makes it much easier to work with inside of a script. So what if we were to go and combine Tuxi with something like eSpeak? Now eSpeak, if you don't know, is a very simple program that does text-to-speech. The text-to-speech results aren't amazing, but it certainly does text-to-speech. So, so here is a very little script called TuxTalk, which I took from the GitHub page and just modified it slightly. And let's say we want to find out who is Richard Stallman. I'm going to go and mute my microphone. Richard Stallman, in full Richard Matthew Stallman, born March 16, 1953, New York, New York, US, American computer programmer and Free Software Advocate, who founded 1985 the Free Software Foundation. Stallman earned a bachelor's degree in physics from Harvard University in 1974. How was that amazing experience? Maybe I should have turned up the speaking speed a bit, but doing so in eSpeak isn't really that difficult. So the script is basically just two lines long, and I probably could shorten it down, but I wanted to have that D menu prompt there to actually have somewhere to actually type stuff in. So pretty much all we're doing is we're getting the result from D menu, we're taking that result and putting it into Tuxi, then we're piping that result into eSpeak, and whatever you pipe into eSpeak, eSpeak will basically read out. Now, because I'm not using Ulsa and eSpeak by default relies on Ulsa, I've got to just send the audio to stand it out. I then pipe it into PA Play, which basically lets you play a bit of audio inside of Pulse Audio, and then it works. So if you want to try this out for yourself, it's basically just a simple shell script that you can go and grab from the GitHub page. There's only a couple of dependencies. So we have a pup, which is a little Python utility for processing HTML. We have Recode, and we have JQ. I believe all of these are in the standard libraries, though. If pup isn't in the standard libraries, it'll be inside of the Python libraries. And all you need to do is just download the repo, and if you really want to, you could run the make file, or you could just put the script where it needs to actually be. Now, there is also an AUR version, but every time I try to install the AUR version, the translation functionality just doesn't work. I don't know why it should be the exact same version, but if you are on Arch Linux, I would recommend just following the manual installation steps I mentioned just before. Now, I didn't show you everything this can do. You can also go and check the weather and do unit conversions as well, as it mentions right here on the GitHub. Now, 
There are other things that Google can do on the search engine, which may not currently be supported inside of Tuxi, but as this continues to be developed, some of those things may end up being added. Also, because this is still in development and the only way to really install it is directly from the GitHub, expect it to sort of break between updates. For a while, it actually was pretty much completely broken. That's why I sort of held off on making my video, because I wanted to give it a actual fair assessment, but it is something you do have to watch out for whenever you are actually pulling something directly from the master branch. So I think that's going to be basically everything for me. But before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Chris, Joachim, Donald, Michael, Andre, Nathan, Dave Monsar, Will, Brennan, Chico Bento, Jamie Joseph, Mitchell, Peter D, Stephen, Tony Shushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you'd like to go and support my work, there'll be links down below to my Patreon, Subscribestar, LibrePay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over T, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Odyssey and YouTube. Odyssey and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's going to be everything for me, and I'm out.